Whenever we hear the passion of Jesus, I hope that our, our hearts are moved for the suffering that, that he endured for us. Perhaps we are able to recognize that it's our own sins that caused such great suffering. Of course, Jesus will often look as though he is overpowered, that he is the one that is the, the victim of, of all this. But of course, we know from the scriptures that ultimately Jesus tells us that this is the reason that he came. He knew that the weight of sin and the just punishment that we deserved could only be expunged by such an incredible sacrifice. But I am struck that as Jesus goes, as he knows he would, in his humanity, we hear his earnest appeal to his friends. He says on the night before he dies, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. He desires to be with his friends at this last moment of his life. I think sometimes we, we overlook just what a consolation it was to Jesus to have the company of his friends and also the incredible pain that would have been found in the betrayal of Judas. We often, I think, overlook this additional suffering. We look at all the, the physical pain that would have happened during the crucifixion, the beatings that took place, the crowning with thorns, the nails. But we, I think, overlook the role that friendship played in the Passion. Jesus tells his apostles on that fateful night, it is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom upon you. Think of all the times that the apostles were there for Jesus. They spent three years together every day at almost every moment of the day. When Jesus comes to this most fateful, important hour of his life, his thoughts go to his friends. It is you who have stood by me in my trials. Any of us that have experienced the suffering of a loved one, family members, friends, you know what it's like to be there to try to stand by, as Jesus says, as those we love suffer. You know the pain of being that person to stand by. Just those words, to stand by, it sounds so helpless. With the greatest suffering going on in the life of Jesus, it seems so pointless and so futile that his friends can merely stand by and watch it all happen. Imagine how powerless they felt. This person that they loved more than anything was suffering the greatest suffering and all they could do was stand by. We think of Mary, especially at the foot of the cross. The liturgy tells us simply, Stabat Mater. The mother was standing there, helpless to do anything. And yet, we know that this very act of standing by is indeed not helpless, not pointless. Indeed, it is all-powerful. Jesus recalls this very truth right before he dies. It is you who have stood by me in my trials. Somehow this act of a friend standing by makes the passion, the pain, somehow a little less. When we are willing to stand by our friends, our family in their sufferings, I think we can feel that perhaps it is pointless. Perhaps it does 
no good. Even those of us who believe very much in the, the power of prayer know the sorrow of praying and praying for someone whom we care about who is suffering and feeling that our prayers have little effect. To pray and pray and pray, and yet the one we care about still suffers and oftentimes still dies. And this despite our prayers coming in what would seem to be the, the best of circumstances. We pray for a, a child who is sick with some illness. We question God, why should a child suffer? And all we can do is stand by and pray and watch. Or a young friend who is suffering with some, some illness, families who are torn apart, and we pray and we pray, and it seems that all we can do is stand by and watch and wonder what effect our prayers have. Perhaps that is why Jesus inspired St. Luke to write in our gospel today those beautiful words. It is you who have stood by me in my trials. It's as if Jesus is telling all of us, no, no, your prayers matter. Standing by the suffering, the sick, the lonely, the dying, it does matter. And in a, a way that's known only to God, those words today that Jesus speaks to the apostles 2,000 years ago, I think in a mysterious way he speaks to us. Today, as we commemorate his passion and as we live out the events of Holy Week over the upcoming days, there is a way in which I think Jesus is saying to us, it is you who have stood by me in my trials. We were not there 2,000 years ago, and yet as we celebrate his passion today, as we go to the upper room, as it were, with him this Thursday night, as we commemorate again his passion on Good Friday, and as we wait at his tomb on Holy Saturday, to the extent that we join our hearts to the sufferings of Jesus, we know it is we who stand by Jesus in his trials. Every time we celebrate this week, we stand by Jesus. And certainly, we are also amongst the apostles who flee. Many times we have not stood by Jesus faithfully. Many times we have fled in the face of suffering. This week, as we celebrate Holy Week, we have a chance to once again be presented with the opportunity to stand by Jesus. Let us therefore not be afraid of suffering. Not the suffering of Jesus, not the suffering of our family, friends, and especially not even our own suffering. Let us be grateful for the friends that have stood by us in our sufferings. Indeed, perhaps as we've experienced our own share of the cross, the passion, and it seems that nothing lessens that pain, perhaps you can recall to mind a friend that stood by you. Whenever we stand by friends in their suffering, we are like Simon of Cyrene, who we hear today, helped carry the cross of Jesus. We are like those friends, those apostles that Jesus refers to. It is you who have stood by me in my trials. Let us be grateful today for all those who have stood by us. And let us do our best this week to comfort Jesus. Even 2,000 years later, our celebration, our joining this week can truly comfort Jesus. And we can hear him say to us, it is you who have stood by me in my trial.